Do you think that as we look at all the factors affecting health, there's any one that's beginning to have a bigger impact than the others? And as an example, mm-hmm. we hear a lot about, you know, our, our environment, mm-hmm. uh, yep. literally our physical environment, the water we drink, the food we yes. eat, the air we breathe. This is a yes. factor. Stress, uh, mm-hmm. just an, an increasing amount of activity in our lives, our digital yep. lives are, are affecting us. Uh, and then just the changing environment of, of our society. Yeah. Um, different responsibilities and different trends. Is there any one of those that you and your team or your research or your companies have no. identified as a real smoking gun that we need to be locked in on? This is a perfect segue to, to talk about um, a lot of my recent work. So I um, so there's the, 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 the sort of the top end sciencey bit around this concept called the exposome. I think everyone has heard about the Human Genome Project. You know, about 20 years ago, we were you know decoded you know the entire you know human um, genetic code. Um, we are now moving to this, um, you know, we've got um, the human exposome project, which really needs to be done, which is very much around how do human beings flourish or not in their wider environment. So this is everything to do with the air that we're breathing, the food that we're eating, the green spaces that we're exposed to, air pollution or not, smoking, um, stress, you mentioned stress, our ability to withstand stress in our lives. And that could be anything to do with um, you know, bad nutrition, um, or it could be financial worries, poverty, you know, all these stresses, human beings are have have um, more or less uh, resilience to these stresses than others. So there's a huge variation. So um, uh, the, the frontier science is, is really focused on that sort of what is happening at a human level for us to withstand stresses or not. Um, so it, and it varies hugely across the life course, it varies hugely across individuals. And so that's like the, the next frontier I, in terms of understanding health, that whole concept around resilience. But in terms of environment, so yes, the exposome describes all those environmental sort of wider determinants on our health, which let's, let's remember less than 20 um, less than 20 percent of the determinants of our health have anything to do with doctors and hospitals most of it is actually outside the the, the healthcare system so what outside health care is sort of how i describe it so it's everything to do with the environment in which you're living so so and i and you mentioned the sort of the smoking guns well smoking is an obvious one <laughs> if you, i mean smoking is the biggest killer by far and it still is and actually it's very very linked to this um concept around um uh, the gap in healthy life expectancy between rich and poor it tends to be more deprived groups that tend to smoke more. So they're most affected. And in fact, if you cut out smoking in one swoop, you cut out this gap between years lived in good health, which is at the moment over 20 years in the UK, you would cut that in half. So that's like massive, right? But air pollution is is also huge. But actually, the one thing I think the other two factors, which are really, really important, because these are very sort of more more within our control, but not necessarily so, because these choices are very influenced by our government. Uh, sorry, our, our environment and the choices that we make, um, both subconsciously and, and consciously, are to do with our diet and, and levels of exercise. So, I would say that one of the big industries um, that we really have to be looking to to do better as a responsible industry is the food industry, because we eat far too much ultra high processed food far too much junk food, which tends to be cheap. So of course, the poorer you are, the more you tend to eat these foods. So, and this is actually the the driver between, uh, the driver behind the obesity epidemic, which has reached crises proportions in the UK. And I know is as serious, if not more serious in the US, we are way too overweight. You know, we've got diabetes, which is eating up more than 10% of our NHS, our public health care systems resources. This is largely lifestyle driven, not, not diabetes one, of course, but diabetes two. This is largely preventable. But having said that, it is and it isn't, because again, it comes back to the food practices and what is available in terms of eating and the marketing practices and the advertising practices. We are literally being um, sort of exposed and made uh, and, and becoming addicted to junk food and ultra high processed food. So that is a huge one to tackle. The other thing is around inactivity. And again, I'm afraid we lead these lives of convenience and ever more so. It's like a so-called good thing. The less you have to do, you can sit on your sofa, order everything that you want from Amazon, you know, Uber Eats and whatever. This is considered a good thing. Well, actually, this life of convenience is killing us because we're not moving around. We're not embedding normal day to day exercise, you know, that we used to do. I I don't know 
um, some of you may have uh, come across this new Netflix program called Live Live to 100. It's all about, and it talks a lot about the experience of the so-called Blue Zone country, so Dan Buechner, which many of you will have heard of, um, and, and especially now now with this Netflix series out. So he's traveling. He travels around the the, the Blue Zone countries and, and cities and finds out. Well, what are they doing that that keeps them going? Many of them living more to. There are more and more, um, you know, people living to to over 100 in these areas, and why? And it's actually linked to very simple things that your grandmother used to tell you. It's like eat really good, healthy food, eat your greens, um, get your exercise, get your fresh air, see your friends, um, do something that you love. And it's all very much bound in communities and um, and social connections and feeling that you're part of, of a community, part of something and having a sense of purpose. Now, it's not rocket science, is it? But actually, we are not doing something right in our society today because we don't do those things. We're not getting enough sleep, we're stressed, we're eating terrible food, not getting enough exercise, getting worried about our financial woes, about you know the, the, the threat of World War III, about climate change, you know, our younger generations are worried about the future. You know, this is really, really, really serious now and um, and are deeply affecting our health. So that's a, that describes very neatly why the exposome, the stresses in our lives, have such a huge bearing. And what I find more fascinating as a scientist and wearing my science hat um, is that the science is actually showing this, the data that is coming out, showing the, 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 the link between our behavior and our psychology and our state of mind is actually fundamentally affecting our biology. 